Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today, we're gonna go over Uranium and the companies and look at how, not really how they changed, but where the dollars per pound is <clears throat> of market cap divided by reserves to see what these valuations are. And I'll give you what my opinion is on some of the companies <clears throat> in the Uranium sector and kind of why I like them and, and whatnot. But Again, this is just my financial opinion. Please don't use it as advice. Just use it as another form of information to do further research into your own due diligence. Uh, but these are the companies that, that are out there. Let me get rid of me. And what this is, this is the name of the company, the ticker symbol, the market cap, the pounds in the ground, and your dollars per pound. These are the pounds that I have in the ground. And I'm gonna give you what my opinion is. Again, guys, please do your own due diligence. So. The, the ones here, we've got Camco and NextGen, Paladin. These are kind of the, the producers. They usually get charged the most on a dollars per pound basis. Oops, I forgot to put a zero in this one. It's 8330. So I'm like, there's no way it's that amount. Uh, and <clears throat> the, the market cap is 8.3 billion, 1.9 billion, 1.5 billion. And this is your dollars per pound that you're paying in the ground. And what these guys do is they extract it out of the ground and sell it for either spot price, which I doubt they're going to do. They're probably going to get into a contract of some sort and sell it for some negotiated price. So you're netting the difference between what the costs are to get it out of the ground and what the price is either in the contract price or the physical, the, the, the physical spot price. And they're netting that whatever their margin is, that difference. But this is what you, you are paying as an investor for the market cap given the uh, reserves that they have. The ones that I like, uh, some of them are highlighted in red. This one should be highlighted in red as well. Uh, th those are the, one, the ones in red are kind of the ones that I prefer. And why do I prefer that? And I'm just gonna go down and, 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 and hopefully I've got this in here. Okay, it's right there. So what I have here is the life cycle of a mineral discovery. And where I like to put my money is in the discovery, kind of kind of the exploration discovery type phase over here, where they can find a discovery at a bunch of value. And what you're doing is you're adding those pounds, the market cap divided by pounds that they could potentially have. And, and that's how they're creating the value, is finding the pounds in the ground. The other ones have pounds in the ground, which are known as developing companies. They're developing mines. And I like buying the ones that are here because if they can develop a mine and become a producer, their value goes from a very low valuation or dollars per pound to a much higher valuation of dollars per pound. And obviously there's risk in building a mine and, and whatnot and getting permits and all this other stuff. And this one, the risk is that they may not find something. That's your risk. Now, looking at all of the stuff I have up here, we'll do one more, boom. These guys have stuff in the ground and you're paying for those dollars per pound in the ground, depending on where they are jurisdictionally what people have in, in terms of their perception of the companies and potentially what their cost curves are. The higher cost producers with lower uh, uranium grades may not get as much dollars per pound. So what you'll see is NextGen, which is a developing co uh, company, has a very high grade deposit. It's going to be able to be produced, hopefully, uh, very cheaply in comparison to a lot of other mines. And it's getting that, we'll call a premium for it. You're paying a little bit more for next-gen energy compared to other companies in the development stage because of its deposit and maybe potentially because of its man management team. And it's in Canada, which some people may perceive as a lower jurisdictional risk, or maybe not. It depends what the market perceives it as. So next gen energy, you're paying $5.57 per pound, a 1.9 billion market cap for a developing company. 
They are not a producer yet. And some of these other ones you're paying, they've got other jurisdictional risks. You're paying a good premium for UUUU. Granted, they do have rare earth metals. So that should be offsetting. And I don't have that offsetting. I just put uranium here. So this is lower than what this number is. DNN, you're paying kind of a premium. UEC, and I know they went through a, a recent acquisition. I do not have that acquisition here. I don't know what that valuation is. But this is what it is currently at the, at the moment, 8.5. Now, the ones that I'm really interested in are the ones that have deposits that are developers that you don't pay too much for the dollars per pound. I also think that they are getting close. They're some of the closest ones to having a developed mine. What that means is when you go and they develop the mine, their valuation of dollars per pound will go up over time. So Global Atomic is in that situation. They're at three point, about three and a half dollars per pound. Uh, and that's where I like to, to look at are those types of companies. So I own a good stake in Global Atomic. Fission is, a, is one kind of like next gen, has a similar deposit. It's not quite as large, but you're paying a very good value for it. So I think Fission Uranium is one to look at. Uh, that's one that I like. Uh, looking on down, Boss Energy, you're kind of paying a, quite a bit for it. They don't have too many pounds in the ground. It's 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 a decent amount. but uh, for the price, I don't know if I I would be going into these as heavily as some of the other ones. Again, guys, that's my opinion. I could be completely wrong here. Maybe Boss will be one of the best, you know, one of the best buys because it is going to be a producer. The question that you have to ask is, what is this going to get revalued higher to? What is five point eight five going to go to? Eight dollars. What if Global goes from three and a half to eight dollars? You get a little bit more bang for your buck. Maybe, maybe not. It might not work out that way. ISO Energy is a exploration company. They could be onto something quite large. Uh, that I, I don't have a you know pounds in the ground, but they're at three hundred eight million. Uh, these are the ones that I really like, and I've overweighted. Encore Energy, very cheap. I think they've got great management team. They're continuing to add pounds to the ground. I don't know if this one. Trying to, I think this has been updated. I know they bought a Zarga as well. I don't know if I have that in there and we'll have to do that, but their market cap went down recently. It's a good, it's a good value there, I think. Uh, Deep Yellow is another really good value here at $1.50 per pound. These guys have done it before. They're right at their trend line. I like Deep Yellow quite a bit. John Borshoff and their Deep Yellow team. UEXCF is still incredibly cheap. That might be one to look into. I think they also have some other metals in the ground. Uh, Forces is very cheap, 0.96. Uh, these are good takeover targets for Chinese buyers as well, uh, which is another kind of thing in the back pocket. But I just, I much prefer that they develop their, their, their mines and their, their uh, resources and get valued higher during this bull market than to get, then get bought out for some small premium. That's me. Uh, Bannerman's another one of my favorites, uh, not 90 cents a pound. Uh, I think this one, yeah, it's going to take a lot of CapEx to start this thing and get it moving, but I still think this is kind of the, the long shot. And if, if, if us uranium bulls think we're going to be as big in, in such a big uranium bull market, I think Bannerman's going to have every opportunity to develop their property and potentially move the dollars per pound to a much higher, larger value than where it is today. You could see multiples higher on their dollars per pound, increasing value for shareholders in this next bull market. And it's probably one of the greatest, they have one of the greatest potentials. Doesn't mean it will manifest itself. I'm just saying it's great potential here. And same with Goviax. I think that's a really good one as well. I've been piling into this, um, overweighting it. Uh, so I'm overweight, Encore Energy, Deep Yellow, Forces Metals. I do own a good stake in UEX. I'm overweight Bannerman and I'm overweight Goviax because of these valuations, because of how the companies are prepared for this next bull market. Bannerman is three, four years away from constructing a mine when they go through all this. Goviax is looking to produce in 2024, 2025, 2026, somewhere in that range. They've got a couple of projects that they've got over in Africa. And you're paying 74 cents for their reserves. And they can prove these reserves up. And if you look at Global Atomic, which may be somewhat of a 
similar. I know they've got some cash flow from some other stuff. It's just similar. I mean, if it gets to three dollars, you're talking about a three or four x to the 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 for their market cap against their reserves. Then these dollars per pound will all go up when the uranium price goes up. So this one could be a very good value. I'm I'm loading into GVXXF. Uh, I like Bannerman, Forces. These are the ones that I think I see great potential in. Plus, you know, they're right kind of over there by the Asian markets. They need uranium badly. And that's where things are developing the fastest is Middle East and over in Asia. They're building a lot of uranium reactors. This is where they're at. I just think, I, I think they're in a good jurisdiction as well. A lot of these Namibia ones uh, up here. So I, that's kind of what my reasoning is behind it. Uh, I also own Laramide. Uh, I mean, Western, we got Western Uranium Vimy resources. I don't know as much about them, uh, but I did buy some Laramide. I do own them. Uh, Appia Energy, I own them as well. I, and then I, I sprinkled amongst all of these. Uh, these are more exploration type companies or smaller companies. I have a little bit in all these. I have a little bit in Blue Sky, a little bit in Pure Point and Can Alaska and Sky Harbor. These are all exploration companies, I, and I overweighted base load. They have a discovery. They have have basically proven it's it's a high grade. Now they just gotta define what the size of this this thing is. Hopefully they hit the mother load because this market cap of fifty four million is ridiculous. If they hit the mother load, uh, it, it very well could go much much higher than where it is today. Uh, but I have a little bit in all these down here to gain exposure in case something hits something big. So that's what I've got for the uranium kind of valuations. Now, I don't put 100% on this. And then you have LEU and LTBR, which are, you know, they're, they're the ones making some of these next generation uranium things and uranium uh, or nuclear reactors, I should say. There, there's some tech behind it. And I, you know, maybe put a little bit in, in those when they bottom out. I, I put some in uh, Lightbridge, LTBR. Uh, and then LEU is another one, Centris Energy. Uh, so I don't I don't put all everything on the dollars per pound, but I do look at it, and I do like the African ones. That's because what I try to go after are the high cost producers, and I know that that seems counterintuitive. They're not going to make as much money. Well, their earnings per share, when they're not making any money today, and in the future if they start earning something, they went from nothing to something, which is a infinite amount of return because you can't divide by zero. So usually in a lot of these, if, you, if you're playing the more risky way to do it, is you go after the high cost producers that people aren't valuing very well. This is the valuations behind what they own and they're not being valued very well. So they have the largest opportunity because the sentiment towards them is the most negative because of, of, of various reasons whether it's the capital cost to get the thing going, whether it's their asset, where it's located, the grades of the asset, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so the ones that I've overweighted are the ones that I like the management teams, you know, like a, like a Bannerman, a Deep Yellow, an Encore Energy. They are very cheap in their dollars per pound. So they have a long valuation runway within their dollars per pound alone to move up on top of the uranium price moving with that as well. So those are the ones that I like. Again, they may not be the best ones. Maybe maybe a Denison Mines ends up being the best producer. Maybe uh maybe Paladin is. I don't have any really in Paladin. And 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 I probably should get a little bit. I, I should because it's it's pulled back and it's about to break out of a massive pattern. Uh, but that's one to look in as well. Uh, it's just I see Paladin. Well, Paladin's probably a decent bet. It's four point seven dollars per pound. It's a going to be a producer. It's probably going to get valued higher. So that's probably another one to look at. And and some of these other ones I don't know as much about, like Peninsula Energy. I mean, it's it's priced at three point seven seven dollars per pound. Is that one to get into? I mean, maybe. <clears throat> but why would I put my money in Peninsula Energy if I could get Forces Metals at ninety six cents? Or deep yellow at a dollar forty six with a management team that's already done it. 
So that, that, those are the things that you have to ask. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm very heavily weighted towards Encore Energy, Deep Yellow. I'm, I'm starting to really bulk up. I have Bannerman too, a, a pretty good stake in Bannerman. And then I'm bulking up Goviax. Goviax, if you were to look at its chart, has a big cup and like a it, it broke, it's like a cup and handle pattern. It's broken out of its its thing and it's doing a retest. I mean, that's where you buy it. So I'm buying a lot in Goviax um, where possible. So I own a good a good mountain and I'm continuing to add into it because of the dollars per pound. I think it's one of the best values and the chart looks absolutely excellent. There's no reason for me not to buy it. So I, I like, at this point, I like Goviax the best based off of charting, valuation, and their potential to go into production some years out. So that's that's kind of my my look at it. If you guys like this uh, analysis, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.